We've heard a lot of stories about how people are using SpecRite and getting value out of it. We heard Jen talk about how she's really changing quality from reactive to proactive. We heard from Greg on how he's changing the approach from procurement to be more intelligent uh, and analytical driven. Um, but now let's look at that on a, on a quantitative basis, right? We've had the qualitative, let's get quantitative, let's dig into the numbers. So what I do is I survey our users and ask them a series of questions and I actually laid the data over year over year and I think there's some really interesting insights from this. And, and we also studied, we commissioned a study to determine the ROI of SpecRite for our customers. Because one of the things as the marketing leader, when I talk to customers and potential customers that I get asked is, Laura, help me tell the story of the value this is gonna bring to my organization, right? How do I justify the cost? And I totally understand that. So we've actually commissioned a study by a third party that's gonna talk about that. So let's dive into how people are using SpecRate today. Um, what we've seen is that, you know, really across the supply chain, different types of users are using SpecRate today. You may hear a lot about packaging because it's so difficult from a procurement perspective or a quality perspective, um, but really the users are across the board and I even love seeing some fellow marketers here as well. I think two really interesting insights that I wanna talk about here today um, are product development and operations. We've seen a lot of growth with these two segments in particular and I wanna talk a lot about why. When you think about a specification, right, it's that DNA of your product. It only makes sense that the product development team should have easy access to that, right? Think about consumer trends and the, the pace of social media chatter. If you need to take advantage of sentiment and quickly pivot a product, if you can exist, clone an existing specification or an existing finished good and start to tweak things, you know, you can really accelerate that speed to market and we're seeing product development professionals do just that, right? They're understanding the value of specifications and how it can help them bring products to market faster and bring more uh, products to market as well. And the second one is near and dear to my heart is the operations folks. These are the people who are often making that product. They're working in your manufacturing facilities or your warehouses uh, and it, it makes sense that they need this information as well. They have to validate, am I making the right thing? Is the material that I have the right material? As it's coming off the line, is it compared to the right spec that my product development team had in mind? So we're seeing all of these different applications and it's going further down the supply chain, which only makes sense. So I think this is really exciting. And we've talked about, you know, what are the benefits that you've seen from using SpecRite? And I think two really interesting ones, I'm always listening and learning from all of you and I'm, I'm so inspired by the stories today that I had to add Two more, two more uh, results this year, right? I had to add faster speed to market and I had to add sustainability tracking because that's what you all are doing with it. And if we had looked at the last slide, only 3% of people have, have quote unquote, you know, spec rate sustainability users. What we're seeing is you all don't have sustainability in your job title, but you have it as part of your responsibility. Right? I mean, almost 30% of people are using SpecRite to help with that sustainability tracking and reporting. And it's really what we're seeing is that that initiative is being pushed on all the departments to execute. Um, and I'm really happy that that's kind of a result that we're seeing as well. In addition to things like the increased employee productivity, the decrease in errors and compliance. And then I think that faster speed to market is so compelling. And Catherine's gonna talk more about that because a lot of the things we talk about um, are bottom line, right? It's, it's saving costs, it's saving time. And that's really important, but I know that when you're talking to an executive, it's all about growing the top line. How do I sell more, right? And so that faster speed to market is an integral part in the story that we're gonna tell around the value. And so another question we ask is, you know, what other systems are you using in conjunction with SpecRite? You know, we heard um, Jen and others talk about the power of that interconnectivity of data. And I think what's really interesting is that Specification data becomes even more valuable, even more powerful when you tie it to things like purchasing and when you tie it to things like inventory, right? Um, as we mentioned before, you know, a lot of these systems weren't built to manage specs, but they still have a lot of important data that should be married to them in some way. And I have a story that I want to tell. Um, we have some Cure Labs folks here. Uh, Molly, um, their chief innovations officer, is really kind of one of the visionaries of users of SpecRite. And she was telling me how they're using SpecRite to identify idle inventory. So they're, they're a beauty company. And they're able to identify idle inventory and create products around that so they can move that off the shelf. 
I mean, talk about using everything you've purchased, right? It's all about how many turns you can get on that inventory. And they're really doing it dynamically because they've tied that data in with their specifications. You're going to hear from Ravi later today on how to do that. You know, what are the options? And, and this is a great um, consideration for those of you who, who are maybe on spec right for a year, who are now thinking, how can I make my data even more powerful? It's great if you're evaluating spec right in terms of, well, who, what else might we want to bring into this? Um, because while, while, the DN, while the DNA is the specification, your sales data is, is super important and you can really show top line results when you tie those two together. I love this question. How are you managing your specs before spec write? You know, we heard John from Gartner talk about the study he had done where most of the executives thought it was being managed in some kind of system. What we're seeing when we talk to, to people who are users is that we're still replacing a lot of manual processes. We're still replacing Excel and share drives and even paper and pencil in some instances. Uh, and I think this is the reality, um, not because people don't know, but again, because the term specification, I think, hasn't been fully defined, right? It's more than that bill of materials. It is really everything you need to make that product, um, which, which does tend to live in these other kind of disparate systems. And I like this question as well, you know, do you see the opportunity to expand spec rights use in the organization? For those of you here last year, you heard me talk about the, de the democratization of data in the workplace. This is a huge trend that's going on, right? People talk about big data, but also access to data and giving everyone in the organization the right access. And, and at its essence, that's what spec rights doing. And when we look at it, most customers do still see an opportunity to expand. Um, Mike made me add the maybe spot this year because he used to be in, like, in the research industry, so he told me I had to be like, correct about it. Um, but we still see overwhelmingly that the answer is yes. And what really makes me happy is I look out in the audience and I see more people from the same company than were here last year. I remember last year when it was just, I think, Stephen from S&D, and now I've met multiple folks from there. Right, The Pactiv team, I, I used, it used to just be Nick and a few others, and now, now there's a group, Grimway. Um, and, and it's not just that they're all here, but it's that they're all benefiting from this data, and it's really transforming not just the way individuals work, but the way companies work. And I think that's really powerful as we explore future ways of working. And, and one last thing on this, you know, I'm really interested in, in industry trends and technology and society and how these things intersect. One of the things we haven't talked a lot about is the baby boomer generation today. I actually think this is one of the biggest risks to companies. There is a generation of people that know how to make your product better than anyone else, and they're retiring, and with them walks 30 years of, of, of the expertise around the specs, around the manufacturing process, and there's someone straight out of college who, who just won't, won't be able to have that, right? There's no, there's no way to replicate that or transition that unless you have a repository where you're documenting all of this. Um, and I think for, for companies, as they, as they look at this kind of generational shift, it's gonna be critical to start to address it. And so, like I said, I think democratization of data, important for a variety of reasons. And I love this, right? It, it, for people who said yes, we said, well, what departments would you expand to? And the overwhelming one that was different than last year uh, was operations. And if you look at quality assurance, that was the overwhelming one last year. And we have quite a few more QA people on this year. So I think we're starting to see that shift of people adopting year over year. And so, you know, operations really hit home for me because I, I tell many of you, um, just last Friday, I got a call at three in the morning. I didn't get a call at three in the morning. My fiance got a call at three in the morning. He's the CEO of an industrial boiler company, right? They run a 24 seven business and they serve manufacturers. And if a boiler goes down in that facility, the, the line is shut down. So it's really bad. So he gets a lot of 3 a.m. calls and I'm listening to him because I'm up. And I hear, I hear the guy on the other phone say, you know, our burner's broken. We need to get this facility back up and running. And I swear to God, he says, well, what's the spec? And the guy on the other line had no idea. He was like, I don't know, I'm, I'm the second shift. Like, this isn't, I'm not, the, I'm not the, the day facility manager. And the reality is he didn't have access to, that, to the machinery specifications. This was a critical asset for their facility, and it's probably in a blueprint somewhere in somebody's filing cabinet. Um, and that's not, that's not the first time I've heard a story like that from him. I see that happening every day in his operation as he's servicing a lot of industrials and looking at the machinery and not being able to quickly figure out, well, what part do I have to replace or what's compatible with your setup? 
I mean, so operators, I think, are going to continue to leverage this because it, it's so important. A lot of operators are talking about preventative maintenance. And while that's really important, if that machine breaks, you need to know what to replace it with. Um, and so I think those few examples are really kind of resonating with the, with the operators. Uh, and I think this is really exciting. So now I want to invite Catherine up. You heard me give kind of some anecdotes about user numbers, but now I really want her to talk about the ROI of spec, right, and some of the benefits we've seen. Catherine? Thanks, Laura. I'm really excited to share these numbers, so I'm just going to dive right in. We've heard your feedback that you need to be armed with information to sell this up in your organization. We hear great customer feedback every day, and some of which you've heard today. But we wanted to give you the best, most objective information that we possibly could. So we engaged Forrester Research, a marketing research company that's reputable and established to, in, to conduct an economic um, impact study. They have a proven method to calculate ROI. And their method, they, they interviewed five existing SpecRite customers, compiled a composite organization, ran their analysis, adjusted for risk, and had the study peer reviewed before being published. And by the way, we'll share the study with you after our presentation today. So what did they find? That we're onto something. A combined three million of benefit over three years. ROI of 461%, payback in less than three months. And to frame that for you, Payback on a traditional ERP system is just under three years. And they identified a number of unquantifiable benefits related to recalls, data security, supply chain visibility. Recalls. You heard Jen from Soylent say that over half of their recalls are related to product mislabeling. And a study in 2016 estimated that the cost of a recall in food industry is $10 million. The point is that recalls can sink a business, and avoiding one is priceless. Data security, disaster recovery, data integrity. No more data stored on a single computer, updated by anyone with access. It's impossible to put numbers behind data that is safe, secure, and edited by people with appropriate permission. Supply chain visibility, knowing your suppliers, knowing their compliance, quality, and safety is paramount, is critical to standing behind the quality and safety of your products. And from a customer, there are systems out there that are designed for compliance documentation, but what they don't do is give you actual visibility into how your supply chain operates. Now, back to what we can quantify. Total cost savings of $2 million over three years. This is spread over a number of areas. Supplier collaboration, $1.5 million. Now, what is supplier collaboration exactly? It's better management of your specifications with actual ownership and actual validation. No more risk of outdated or superseded information going to your suppliers. No more risk of your suppliers producing the wrong thing. Collaboration, less waste, more profitability, everyone wins. 300,000 from order consolidation. SpecRite gives you the visibility you need to be intentional with your procurement. Create efficiencies, realize savings. And finally, to a combined 270,000 from FTE savings, full-time equivalent, time savings, back to your individual contributors. You heard Greg from Flowers Food say they got 40 plus hours a month back. <laughs> Sorry, I have to check my notes here. Um, an executive uh, at the time of our study had 300 product changes going on at once that impacted every internal function and external press and marketing agencies. That's a lot of ducks to get, in the row, to get in a row to get it right. Stop chasing data. Let your engineer who's da doing data management get back to engineering. And on a personal note, 
I can pretty much guarantee you that everyone in your finance department will back you up in putting an end to chasing numbers, because it drives us crazy too. Now, naturally, this is my favorite statistic. Top line impact. Growing your top line, growing your business, because it's not just about cost savings. 840,000 from accelerated product development. Trends catch fire on social media. I mean, Kylie Jenner created a billion dollar industry, or a billion dollar company off of it. Specrate gives you the data you need when you need it to capitalize on these market trends. And additionally, 335,000 from better customer responsiveness. Visibility, product, differen product differentiation comes from your product claims and your ingredient lists, all of which are driven by the market. And Specrite gives you the ability to make changes fast and leverage all of this information. And if you're not tapping into either of these leverage points, talk to us. So we've gone through the quantifiable and unquantifiable benefits of using Specrite. But what I find so exciting is that Specrite is a solution for today that's innovating for tomorrow. You heard Matthew talk about it yesterday. We're trying to solve problems before you even know you have them. So it's a solution for today with an eye on the future, a platform, a system that will be relevant and useful 10, 20, and 30 years from now. One last number. I promise just one, maybe two, but thanks for bearing with me. 50%. We're growing our team by 50% in 2020. And for those of you here at User Group last year, we'll actually be three times that size at the end of, at the end of 2020. Specrite's commitment to you is giving you a platform that is safe, efficient, effective, and innovative, and delivering to you a team of experienced and talented individuals that are dedicated to helping you make amazing things. Thank you so much.